Okay, here we go for our, our chat um, and our little cup of tea with our Integrity Zone, Ryan Simpson. God, you Hello. look just like your dad. Oh my goodness, wow. Well, a, a much better looking than, 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 than your dad, of course. <laughs> so, so Ryan, um, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. I know you moved to Cornwall, just to to your dad, obviously. I know you moved to Cornwall. Mm -hmm. How's life down there? Yeah, it's really quiet. Um, but very different lifestyles to being in Dorset in Paul. A lot more tractors. The roads are very narrow and windy and horrible to drive on. But it's really quiet, really nice and relaxing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I can't go to the beach at the moment, but it's good to stay indoors, just chill. Um, so how far from the beach sort of are you? How far from the beach are you? Um, so from the Dupoff Beach, I think it's like a five minute walk or okay. something like that. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. But, but I, think I, was, I was speaking to your dad good. and he was saying that... Um, Ever since you've been here, you've been kind of in lockdown, so you haven't really been able to go to the beach. Is that right? Yeah. So I've just been training in the back garden, doing lots of the uni work. Um, yeah, that's it, really. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would, I would love to go out to the beach, yeah. like, do that sort of thing, but it's good yeah. to stay indoors, just yeah, listen to what the government is doing. Yeah, well, good man. That's it. Listen to the government. Do do what we're told. I was talking to your dad, and I was telling him that when I was a, a young whippersnapper, when I was young and fairly fit, not 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 as fit as you, we used to do summer camps about three miles from where you are. We used to be on the coast. Um, yeah, it was it was really cool, and we used to we used to go for for breakfast in the Asda in St Austell. So anyway, all right. Yeah. So, right, sir, so uh, for those that don't know, um, you also compete, um, obviously, all the Taekwondo people know you for competing in ITF, but you compete mm -hmm. in WT as well. So can you explain yeah. the difference between the two? So in ITF, it's, you, you have a big bulbous gloves and foot guards on. So, um, in WT, it's more like you wear MMA gloves and you wear like a big body protector for me because i'm a black belt that body protector's got electronic sensors in it and the feet guards have sensors in them as well and the head guard so you have to hit the body or the head at a certain level for it to register on the electronic kit so it's not just like touch and hope you score you have to it's like more objective i guess is is that is that really um uh, not not effective, but is it is it guaranteed? Because I remember the Olympics, uh, uh, not the last Olympics, but the Olympics before. There was a lot of problems, mm -hmm. and people were scoring, but the the system didn't kind of work. Is that is that all sorted yeah. out now? Um, I would have thought so. They're always making lots of differences to the kit. Um, there's there's different variations of the electronic sensors. I think the last Olympics, it was their first time trialing new system. It's called KPMP. So I think that's had like lots of development now. So hopefully it should be ready to go and optimized for the Olympics in next year now. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Were, were you Amazing. were you involved with the Olympic squad or or not? I'm not sure because I haven't seen you for so, such a while. Yeah, so I went back in the day. Like I I went so 2014. I went. And transferred, I started doing a bit more WT style stuff, mm -hmm. training for like a year, and then I got onto the GB development squad. So as, as right. a junior, so I was training there. But then I got injured at around the time of my GCSEs, so I pulled off of it. And now I've had the chance to go back up there again and start training with them, doing like talent days and different camps up there with them with the with some of the coaches up there so it's, it's good to keep my face in and that sort of thing but for now because my weight's sort of in the center I, i'm 75 right now in in wt taekwondo you've got i think there's only like four qualifying weight divisions it's either minus 80 or minus 68 so they've said to me That's they will never take difference. me on unless yeah, they'll ne they'll never. They said to me, "You either got to drop to minus sixty eight, and I'm I'm already quite skinny as it is, so I'll just be like a skeleton, mm. 
or I've got to put on loads of muscle to, so I can be like above 80, so I can drop below 80. So it's, I, it's, I'm sort of in a very difficult spot with that, to be honest. So I've, I've just got to let it be. Um, I'm got, uh, over this sort of time, when I go back to uni, I'm going to start doing like a, a weight training program so I can try to put the weight on more healthily rather than dropping a load. Yeah, like, of doing course. Like, well, well, well that's scale. interesting because th I was going to ask you about nutrition because obviously, for those who don't know, I know you're studying sports science at Bath Uni. Yeah. And, and a lot of people mm -hmm. may, may not know that, which is, oh, well, well where, where's Ryan gone? Well, it's because, hey, he's gone to Cornwall, but he's also studying in Bath. Yeah. And um, how, how important is nutrition, especially now, if you're going to have to put on a lot more weight? How important is that to you? And more importantly, for people that are, well, not more importantly, but for people that are watching this video? Um, so I would say for... I'll, I'll start off with me and then I'll sort of go more general. Sure. For me, I've got to, so it's, you've got to be careful with the way you get your calories in because I went to fitness first once and I asked a personal trick, like this was like ages ago. And he said to me, you could just eat Big Macs if you want to um, get big and muscly. That's really? the advice he gave me. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. Okay, we shall be going to fitness first then. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's very strange. But yeah, you, you can't, so most people say to you it's just about the calories, but it's about the sort of foods that you're taking in as well. See, because my sister's like a vegan, I've been eating pretty much vegan protein sort of food. Like I, I can't remember the last time I had like meats or like anything like that, especially this year at uni. I've, I've sort of like gone a completely plant-based sort of diet. I haven't seen any detrimental effects to my performance but it's i just got to ensure that i get enough calories but sort of good calories so it's a quite a lot of protein i need to be having obviously all those kind of taekwondo i'm doing plus the weights mm. so it's just it's just trying to be a bit more sensible with that if if you're actually wanting a sort of tracker i've been using something called my fitness pal so you can like sort of track, you can like put in the foods you want and you can see all the, the sort of macronutrients that are in that food. So you can see the carb break down the proteins and the fats of each of your foods. So over the day, you can hit like certain calorie goals and different things like that. So you can see if you're getting enough proteins, fats, carbs to sustain what you're doing, yeah. all your performance and that sort of thing. But for people in general, like especially during this sort of time, I would say don't uh, just ensure you're doing a bit of like exercise, um, but don't just like lay on the Easter eggs now because <laughs> obviously being indoors you're gonna be a bit uh, like a sedentary lifestyle a little bit. Yeah. So just gotta be a bit careful with it. Keep the training up. Just try and maintain that flexibility. It's a chance for you to develop that flexibility now. See if you can all get to the box bits before you go back to the Master Jones classes. <laughs> the front of it. Yeah, it would be fantastic. It's just uh, just got to try and maintain things a bit more, guys. Well, that, that's say. an interesting point, Ryan, because I've obviously in the last three, four weeks, I've been teaching a lot in my gym, as you know, the, yeah, the yeah. gym that your dad built. I've been, yeah, teaching, yeah. I've been doing an awful lot more training now mm. than I have when I normally go to the classes. So it, right. it has been, it has been quite, quite good for me. On that, side, yeah. so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing okay. But it's good for you to put that information out there, sir. So thank mm. you. So thank you very much. Now mentioning your dad, I know he's been a fantastic supporter of you, and I know yeah. over the last what 14, 15 years, he's gone mm. tens of thousands of miles all over mm. Europe for you, um, yeah. or with you, and he still t continues to do that now, doesn't he? Is there anybody um, else that's been a, a massive influence and supporter of you? Um, I would say pretty much all of the coaches I've had. So starting off with, obviously, Mr. Brown. Then I went to so Mr. Pidgeley. Then I went to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, all my WT coaches. All the people I've been training with. So since I was like 10, I've been training with like sort of adults and that sort of thing, like Sean. Sean and... Um, Jason Bassett, those are like my sort of first sort of sparring partners. And 
yeah, I still keep in contact with like Sean Freeman and like all the Josh and James and Heather. So that's that's all that's all good. Um, all my uni people, uh, the training training partners there are quite good. And and is that mainly WT or is that ITF or both? I would say it's it's predominantly a WT club, but there is an ITF side to it. So when I go back to uni, I'll be the ITF captain for my last year. Uh-huh. Um, so I'll be sort of leading ITF sessions at that uni, like when there are booked sessions in and that sort of thing. But yeah, I'll just say pretty much everyone I've, I've come across, if you know me, you've, you've definitely helped me some, some way in I'm terms of like grades or, or anything really, like just training in general. Like every, every, every second of training, you learn something and yeah. you learn what, what, to, like, what not to do next time. You learn new things, you pick up things off of different people. So if you know me and you've trained with me, you've definitely helped me somewhere. Oh, that's really nice, right? And I know it's a bit of a cliche, sir, but um, everyone says that, oh, you're really humble and you're really grounded, but you are really humble and you are really grounded. So that's nice, you know, because someone of your of your level and your skill set and your, your, the, your phenomenal success, it, you could easily get carried away with it all and I'm the big I am but you're not like that at all. And that's a fantastic thing. So thank you, sir. Um, yeah, so if, what, so what, if anybody so, did see me go like, if, if, any, if I ever did get arrogant, I would want you to punch me in the face. Oh, I'll so, do that. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that won't, be, that won't be happening anytime soon. <laughs> so, so what would be your normal training regime then? Obviously, if you were back at Bath Uni and obviously the lockdown's not on, what, what would be your mm. normal training week, a week for you? Um, so it's a bit of a difficult one with the uni because the space where we train is a judo dojo. So we, uh, over this year, when I've been at this uni, the head judo coach has said to us, we can't train in that dojo with our feet guards on. So we can't spar in that dojo because apparently the, the ITF foot pads and the WT foot pads, they damage the floor. So we haven't really been able to spar with feet guards and kit in their dojo. So we've been having to try and um, train in like athletics on the athletics track, like on the indoor athletics track, doing sparring and placing our own pads down. Um, Mm -hmm. But a normal training week could be for me, I I would do, I would try to go five days, like some Monday to Friday, I would try to do. And then Saturday, Sunday would be, I, would, I, I normally alter it if there's competitions. So if there's a competition on the weekend, I'll take two days rest before and load yeah. in the carbs, yeah. allows my body to recover. But that's yeah. just something I found over the years works for me. Yeah. But if I'm not in sort of competition, I'll do five days a week. What, what I was doing before all of this happened is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday were Taekwondo sessions. But Tuesday was just in the gym doing like cardio, weights, different like functional exercises, like, like skipping, like box jumps and that sort of thing. But mon- like, alongside the training sessions, the Taekwondo training sessions, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I would also do gym. So overall, I would be doing um, quick maths, eight sessions a week, um, and maybe I'll do sparring on Saturday morning every now and then, and I'll alter that. So leading up to a competition, the sessions would get more intensive, and the volume of sessions would decrease. So I'll do less sessions towards a competition, but they would be a lot more high intensity. So like instead of doing two hour session, which isn't that hard, I'll do like 30 minutes of like right. high yeah. intensity training or power training. So it's just optimizing your body and your systems. So you're ready to fight and you're at the best physiological levels you could be. So fantastic. Yeah. So so how is your so now you can't do that and you mm. I, I know you you showed me a quick um 
quick tour of your house. So, so I presume yeah. you're training in the garden or, or what, what, what sort of training are you doing? Kind of, cause I can't imagine you just sat down on your backside and doing nothing. So, so no. what sort of stuff are you doing now? Um, so this is what I would consider. So I, I've had to go into this sort of training period early. So I normally train in like different blocks. So throughout the year, I would have like a fight camp block, an off season, like and that sort of thing. So right now I would be doing just like general fitness stuff. So I don't know, just like a, a bit of cardio, nothing too specific. Obviously I'm still doing my techniques, maintaining my flexibility, but luckily I've got one of those big century Bob um, dummies outside. So I've been practicing my techniques on that. But apart from that, I've been just doing lots of press ups, like running, running up and down the stairs in my garden. Um, also, like in the in the loft, I've been like leaning the ladder up in the loft. So I've been doing like pull ups on the ladder. Um, <laughs> it was real Rocky style stuff. It's real Rocky style. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, 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 so just to be clear, so 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 just to be clear, Ryan, you still compete in patterns don't you yeah 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 and but obviously my focus has always been on the sparring side of it because i've always enjoyed that a lot more like yeah. for instance like you, you know i went to the world and <laughs> forgot dan gun yes i remember it yeah i can remember <laughs> yes it was on the yes i remember it well it was the last thing of that night and we were thinking, yeah. oh, my God, how has he got through? How on earth is he through to the, <laughs> to the second round, even when he forgot the pattern? And then you went on to win it, didn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, without knowing that. Cool. But, 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 but nobody knows that. Well, actually, they do now because they've just... Everybody it. knows. Everybody knows. <laughs> everybody oh. knows all the very good patterns anyway. I'd always, when I was teaching people, I'd always forget a, forget a move every now and then. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so what advice, sir, would you give to people who want to be as as much? And I know you don't like the word superstar, but frankly, Ryan, you are a superstar. Um, uh, what, what what advice would you would you give to people who would like to emulate you? Um, I would say, I would. I've never. There's always been people that I've looked up to, but I've never like to be. It's so important to be unique. So take things from people that you like and that sort of thing, but you got to add your own twist to it because if you, if you like become like a complete copy of somebody and that sort of thing, you're, especially in like fighting, you'll be, you'll be more like readable mm -hmm. and you got to add your own sort of twist to it in order to be successful. Like for, for me, I've done lots of different styles of Taekwondo so when I've come, when I did all my WT um, and came back to ITF, obviously it was completely different when I was sparring people because people couldn't read what I was doing. Mm. For instance, back in the day, I used to really idolize like Phil Whitlock, Mike Whitlock, people like that. But now, but they were just like super pummely with their hands. But I've... I've sort of done lots of different styles and sort of created my own thing from it. So I'd just say the, the key is just got, you got to be you, add your own twist to it because there's only one you, you know? So That's everyone thinks differently advice. and yeah. Yeah. So you got to make your own style because that's, that's the best style. Wow, that's brilliant advice, Ryan. That's superb. And, and I hope people watching this, take, and they take that on board, whether that be kickboxers or taekwondo people, they can take that mm. on board from someone who's walked the walk and talked the talk. So that's great mm. advice, sir. So what are your goals, uh, either in ITF or, or, or WT? What goals do you have? So obviously, I was comparing, I was preparing for a lot of competitions, which have now been postponed because of this lockdown so obviously one of the uh there was a university world championships being held by ross sharman in manchester yeah. um which was, yeah which was happening this month i believe i think the fourth or the fifth that's right i think that's been postponed to november, november. yes um so i'll be preparing for that um 
obviously, I know a lot of people um, that I'll be fighting now in my weight category because I've been fighting them already in my uni competitions. So far, I've beat them undefeated in ITF. So hopefully, I haven't got any surprises going into that one in November. Mm-hmm. But apart from that, um, in WT, I've I believe I've qualified for the European University Games. Wow. So you have to you have to achieve a certain amount of points in each of the three competitions over, that are held by the British Student Taekwondo Federation over the uh, competitive year. Mm-hmm. So out of the three ITF and the three WT um, competitions that I've done, the different divisions, out of the six, I've won five golds. But in the last... In the in the last WT tournament, the, a guy that I fought like three times, I beat him. There was this, this huge French dude. Uh, he must be he's so much heavier than me. In the last ten seconds, he got this headshot on me. A headshot's are worth three points. Mm. So the the end result was seven four to him, which was it is fair enough because I've beat him lots of different times. But he just got a lucky shot on me at the last minute. But I know, I know what I need to do to improve and that sort of thing. But now what that means is me and that French dude, because we've got the most points in the WT division, we've qualified to compete in Belgrade in Serbia, which was going to be happening over summer this year. But now I believe they've um, extended that out until next summer. So it'll be the same location, same place, still qualified. It would just be a little bit later on. So that means I'll just have to start my preparation Yeah. Um, 12 weeks before the competition starts next year instead mm-hmm. of doing my 12 weeks now. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's a shame, but I've still got stuff to look forward to in the future. So that's all good. Okay, because I, I was, um, obviously I follow, obviously I haven't seen you competing physically myself in, in probably a long time, I think probably over a year. Mm-hmm. But I follow yeah. what, what your dad posts on Facebook and what you post. I know your dad posts a lot. And you've been mm. competing in the WT heavyweight division all the time, haven't you? It's always the yeah. best giants. And, and, and yeah, so, but I, you know, what I said to him was, and he said, oh my God, Ryan's up against all these huge guys. <laughs> said, well, speed's going to kill everything. And, and that's what you've got in buckets, haven't you? You've got so much mm. speed and accuracy. That, that, yeah. that that's gonna yeah good but i i, I hope you beat this guy and, and yeah, i wish, so I yeah, wish so you all the best in in those so yeah, ha, so how i think you're what that's what are you 20 21 20 yeah 20 20 so how long do you think yeah. you can sustain this uh, magnificent level of success for how, how, you know re- realistically um so obviously i i have I've, I've sustained a few injuries over my time, like my hips and my knees. So I just got to train a little bit smarter now. Obviously, I'm learning all that sort of thing through my course. But as long as I train, train pretty well and I, I don't train stupid and just like throw kicks constantly, like high velocity kicks, I've got to try and pair the stretch in, the recovery. Mm. The strength and what the strength work. As long as I do all that sort of stuff, I, I reckon I could still still go on for for a little like a few years longer. Obviously, I don't want to end up like a few people that like we know like that have already had like mm. hip replacements in their thirties yeah. and that yeah. sort of thing. I don't really want to yes. end up like that just yeah. yet. So as long as I train sensibly, hopefully I should be able to go a little while longer. Well, well, with that knowledge that you're gaining at Bath Uni, you're going to be a phenomenal resource for, for, for people in the future. Because as you say, I mean, I, I, I don't see Phil Whitlock anymore, but I know Phil, you know, from, from, from back in the day. And, and he was training very much like he, he's the same sort of talent and ability and what have you, and was on the competitive circuit. But he, I know his instructor was always saying to him, you're doing too much, you're doing way too much. And, and that's, yeah. it's proved, um, unfortunately, bless him. You know, we all wish him all, all, all the success and, 
and get him back to some sort of uh, a level of, of, of enjoying his taekwondo again. But yeah, so yeah. it seems like you've got a good um, understanding of what of what is too much. Yeah, that's good. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Like um, obviously, there's there's this big sort of thing in the training and exercise sort of world, like no no pain no gain and mm, mm. rest is for wussies and all that sort of thing but it's just out of date uninformed information like rest is so important mm. obviously I, i'm not training all the time I, I i like playing my games and just chilling like watching movies and that sort of thing you can't be training the whole time otherwise you will just injure yourself mm, mm. and you won't be able to do what you like to do yeah, so of course. yeah. rest is so ideal Yes. Okay. So, um, last question for you, sir. So, so you've been competing for, let's say you're 20 now. So for, for 10 years plus. Really? Yeah. 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 What, what, what has been the highlight of your career so far? Would you say? Um, I would probably say the worlds that I did with you, Mike, Mr. Bartlett, Billy, dad, like, yeah, I, I would say that has been a fantastic experience, like being part of that team and that sort of thing. Obviously, like being at uni and that sort of thing, it's it's nice, but I haven't known those people as, as long as I have known yes, yes. all of you guys for yeah. and that sort of thing. So it's, it, was, it was a bit nicer, you know. And, and was, was, was it also because that tournament, that Dutch tournament, was such a big one? Was so, you mm. know, the, the, the categories were big. Even though you mm. forgot Dan Gunn, but we won't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> but, um, it, but it was a big tournament, wasn't it? It was. It was yeah. big. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Oh, and fantastic. I was training quite hard for that one, and the, the opponents were difficult. I, 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 it wasn't a breeze, in my opinion. All the guys I was against, they once again, as as always, most of the guys I fight are huge. They're behemoths. Um, so yeah, that was, and plus when somebody like that's punching you in the face, yeah, it's not it's not ideal. So yeah, it was it was a, it was a nice feeling, like knowing that my my movement I was doing in all the squad sessions that you was holding, mm -hmm. I was helping me out, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. You know? Do do you see Billy? Because Billy's in the WT thing now, isn't he? Do you, do you mix yeah. with Billy at all? Yeah. So um, whilst I've been at uni when i was in paul still i was training a little bit with my old wt coach as well okay. as, yes. as yeah. yourself it um so that was at bts but that was in southampton so it was just a trek i i, I hated going there because it was so long travel mm. um obviously i haven't got a lot of money so petrol and that sort of thing like i i can't ex i can't expect my dad to be going forward and back to Southampton constantly because it would just be astronomically expensive. But yeah, so I was trained with Billy up there. He's sort of completely gone down a WT path now. And so far he's doing really well. Um, so he's, he's in the same, so he's in the same um, development squad that I was in. Um, so, so, as long as he keeps performing well, he could have a route into the world class program because he's a really good weight as well. He's tall, he's really slender, and mm. slim and athletic, mm. like a taekwondo fighter would look like in the Olympics. Mm. He would probably do quite well because I think he's taller than me and I think he weighs probably 58, 63 kilos. Oh my God. Oh my word. Wow. Yeah. Because he's got to be, what, 18? 18? 17, 18? 18. Yeah. Yeah, I know he weighs a lot lighter than me. He might be 58 kilos. That's still quite light, considering that's his size. Light. Yeah, that's really light. So he's going to have a distinct advantage then, isn't he? With his height and what yeah. have you. And he was quite leggy. Yeah, he was always... really tall and slender people. He was always quite leggy, wasn't he? Yeah, he was always quite leggy. Oh, wow. And, of course, WC, that's going to suit him down to the ground. So so just one more thing before I let you go, sir. We, we were talking about, obviously, you were talking about um, people pummeling you. Mm. Would you ever, do you ever think you could could go into a, a full contact kickboxing thing where 
their whole objective is to punch you in the face? Um, obviously, we had that conversation about yes. me potentially going into yeah. that. Like, that would have been something I would have loved to do because it's a completely different thing for me to focus on and train for. Obviously, that's not going to be happening now. But yeah. I, I reckon if I put my mind to it and actually devoted lots of time to developing my punches and having lots of boxing sort of style fights, if I could combine that with my sort of taekwondo kicking style, I reckon I would do mm. okay. It's, it's just I've spent so much more time developing my legs than my punches. So. Yeah, of course. Of course. There would be a lot more development with the punches and the evasion and the head movement. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, there would always be an opportunity for you, as you know, as we had that conversation. But, uh, you know, knowing you as I do, you know, you're not just going to step into that without that exact that criteria that you've just set yourself. You're not just going to go, yeah. oh, yeah, I can do it because I'm Ryan Simpson. You, you'd have uh -huh. to train really, really hard and get into that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that, you, that different every, every match you have to train hard for. Like, I, there's never, ever been a, a competition where I've walked in untrained, un, mm. un shape, like not in shape. Everyone, every competition I train for, I train as if it was the world's in Barnevold. Mm, mm. You've got to train, you've got to try and just, as long as you're training to the best level you can, Hopefully that will show on fight day. Mm. Mm. We'll Ryan, this has been an absolutely fantastic interview. It's really great to see you. And it was great to see yeah, your you mum and dad. I didn't quite see your sister, but say hello to your sister as well. I didn't quite yeah, see really. her. But it's really great to see you, Ryan. And hopefully, you know, one day you'll come back to Paul and meet up with everybody. And, um, you know, maybe you can come down and take a training session for us. So that would be great. I'll tell you what, uh, this is definitely, uh, obviously, uh, I never had a chance to properly say goodbye to everybody, but I, I definitely will, you definitely will see me in person again at some point, of that bit of competition. I will definitely try to come down to Paul next yeah. year, Yeah. because I'm still, I'm still keep in contact with the Freemans, and they're in firm and down. Yes, of so course. So I can come down and train with you guys at some point. Yeah, yeah. It's Brilliant. definitely not the end. Oh, fantastic. Lovely to see you, sir. Thank you ever so much. And um, enjoy the rest of your evening. And don't eat those Easter eggs. I won't do. <laughs> <laughs> uh...